everybody welcome back as is the norm unboxings are fun and buying orchids is fun but it is also accompanied with some subsequent work thank you so much for joining me we have work to do despite the fact there will be idle cars in the background and the banging of the gate all good fun in a Spanish late afternoon. But it's time to get these orchids that I got from Tetrans into their new home. So I'm just feeding through the microfiber, preparing the pots, and then we shall have a look see at what state the old roots are in and how we can work with the new roots because we have some. I really appreciate the fact that you're here with me so I can talk to you and let the neighbors think I have a problem. But I always said if I have to go somewhere, I will only go if it is with a Versace straight jacket. Otherwise, don't bother. <laughs> so I've had a couple of days to keep these encyclias hydrated. I've had them in their shadier, more protected area of my dining room shelf so that I could watch them, get them acclimatized. Even though they are highlight orchids, it's one thing coming from wherever you were before they got to Belgium and it's another thing being hauled off to Spain and then me straight away addressing another shift so I gave them a couple of days to acclimatize I've soaked them twice so they should be good and ready to go into their new homes microfiber is in place on both of them. I've put two because I believe these are thirsty. Let's get the first one. The Brassavola. Brassavola A. Prostechia. And I do apologize in my unboxing video. I misspelled Prostechia. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought I had done my homework. For me, it's always like the new names. I get a little bit confused, so I do apologize. But I will not make that mistake again. And thank you for pointing it out to me. I do appreciate it. Otherwise, I will be continuously repeating the same mistake. And that's nonsense. I shall be unpeeling these gently. There's a nice little root ball on the bottom, but that is all compromised. There's nothing alive down here. But there's nice juicy ones all around the top. And we can work with that. Yeah, I might uh, forfeit the spike if there is one to develop, because there is a sheath in there and in there. So yeah, we do have some sheaths and I may forfeit the blooming by doing this now. But this is my time of year. I prefer to get this done now as opposed to waiting and leaving it too late and then it cannot adjust and adapt into the LECA with self-watering. I won't bore you with all of this. I will come back when I'm done. So far, everything's coming off relatively easily. I don't have to get out my little tweezers or knife that I use to wedge off bark from roots. I'll just continue on with this for a little bit and I'll come back. Okay, we're back. It's a pretty decent root system. So let's have a look here. Let's have a look-see. It 
it's pretty decent, I must say. I'm very happy with that. Let's get some of these sheaths off and be very careful. There's a new growth coming. And in order to protect that new growth, I'm just going to split this old sheath down the middle and take off the side that won't affect the new growth. Because if I slide it off all in one go, I'm going to snap it off. So just bit by bit. And then we'll leave it. Safety first. A little bit cautious. We can make other mistakes a little bit further down the line, but with the ones that are obvious, let's take it easy. Okay, squishy roots. Sorry, I just got bitten. Squishy roots. Peel right off like that. You know they're squishy. They feel papery, and then the outer section just comes off. So that's what we're gonna be cutting off. We're gonna get this as clean as possible. I have seen down here, that's something to be aware of. Where are you? Down here, it looks like a root is compromised, but it is branching. So you do get cases like this. However, with all these black marks here, now, if I didn't have all of this going on up here, I'd be more cautious, but that is coming off, even though it is a branching root. Simply because I can be generous about what's going on up here. I don't have to be so careful in this case, which is awesome. So I'm just going to move around to the front and get the roots off. I have a little fertilized water here with seaweed just to keep rejuvenating in case it gets a little bit too warm, but I doubt that very much. It is late afternoon after all. Dead root. The velamen is compromised. And you can see that there is no substance to it whatsoever. Dead root. Now, because I have this generous root system to work with, I'm not going to sit around and thread every single individual bad root off. So I chopped the bottom half off to give me a better idea of what's going on inside. And then I'm working my way one root at a time to the top. I'm still dealing with really bad roots. And this can take a couple of hours if you're going to be pedantic about it. And I like to take my time Why so, why take off all the dead roots, you ask, or maybe you don't ask? Well, basically I'm changing its growing setup. I'm not going from organic to organic. I am going to put it into inorganic. And to avoid rotting issues, things happening inside my pot, straight from the get-go. The best is to clean up the root system as best as possible and then have a clean start. And whatever happens after that, it's a kind of a control measure for me that it wasn't because it, there was rot in the pot to begin with. So I like to get it as clean as possible, which eliminates one factor in case something goes wrong. 
then I know it's not, it's not for the reason of carelessness. Now, if something else were to go wrong in the pot, then I have to consider what that could be. But at least this way I have eliminated one possibility. That plastic bag was a nuisance. I need to remember my white tray. So, Rasabole and Cyclia Prostechia. Sorry, this old old person needs to learn Prostechia Rasabole has been cleaned up as good as I can clean it up and I do not see any need for hydrogen peroxide none this is a dried off root tip that happens but in the past days I have not seen any sign of snails anywhere so no hydrogen peroxide, that's great because then we can get to filling up the reservoir straight away with fertilized water. And what am I peeling back here? Yeah, what is this? Okay, let's get that off. What are we seeing? What are we looking at? A compromised new growth? I will be watching that. It'll be above the lecker, so I won't be worried about it. That doesn't look, it looks like it rotted at some point, but it's dried out. That'll be fine. I'll be watching it. Before we do anything else, let's have a look at the other one, which is Ionocentra. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. There we go. I told you I can't sing. All this is, yeah, Kaputski. Kaputski. Okay, this one I am beginning to understand. All right, there's a root tip there. Be careful of that. I won't be taking this bark off. It doesn't matter. One or two pieces. Even though I'm putting it into inorganic media, one or two pieces really don't make the difference. The issue is rotting roots. That, yes. Old, dead roots. And this one, this one surprises me. I expected this one to be much better in the root department than it actually is. Very interesting. You see? It can all be very misleading. The reason I expected that was because of all these branching tips right here. And I thought, seriously, I thought that it would be branching in the pot as well. But nope. No luck. No dice. Get you out. Okay, before we get ahead of ourselves, it could just be the media that's making it look bad. It could just be the staining of the media because not many of these roots feel squishy. They are actually quite, they feel quite firm, except the ones down here. That down there is no good. We can go in radically. That's all the back end. And that can come off without having to think twice. I did sterilize my clippers off camera between this, starting this one. 
I don't think I'm gonna keep this bowl. Yeah, I made up my mind. I'm going to cut that bulb off in the back here. We'll do that together. <laughs> Gives us an opportunity to have a little peek at the rhizome. But these roots, I thought, were all nasty. They're not. They are firm. Oh, this one isn't. <laughs> but I do want to see the back here. This bulb can go. And let's get to the bottom of it. Apologies about that cut. My daughter has left the building and Baloo is absolutely goes mental when that happens. So no point talking over that. It's better just to address the situation straight away and remind him who's boss, which he doesn't appreciate. <laughs> okay, this is a long one and it's cracked over here. And it's a good one. But I did take it away to the cracked part. So I'm hoping I can see that properly. The sun is glaring so brightly. No complaints. No complaints. Just I can't see it clearly on the screen. You'd think that they would by now invent screens that were anti-reflection. You would think, no? With all the fandangle equipment that they bring out. Make your life easier, they said. Do this, they said. And then it doesn't really, really qualify completely. Not yet, anyway. All right, I have something going on there. I'm not going to disrupt that. But these two pieces in the back there can come out. Oh, wow. I still have all these, actually. Yeah, they are not attached to the last bulb. So we'll just keep going. And let's break up the monotony. And get rid of this old bulb. It's looking pretty clean to me. That doesn't look too bad. That's fine. So I'm still considering water shortage. <laughs> There's no reason for back bulbs to be desiccated like that. I am very mindful of that new growth. I keep thinking of my orange nugget that I thought I was handling with care and then whoop, I was proven otherwise. So these roots back here, I love the color of these roots. All the Prostechia experts out there, tell me, do these roots look familiar? Is this Prostechia typical? Or is it just because of the Ionocentra? Look at them. They're orange. They're pretty. And they're firm. I'm telling you, I'm totally... I was totally wrong to begin with. I thought they were all compromised. I'm so used to seeing a certain type of root. Different and pretty. Let's see. Yep, you're fine. You're not. And that'll be it. So just a little rejuvenation there for her. And then we will pack on the cinnamon to cover up that cut. And then we will pot them both up. 
So I have my little supports here. I have a few. We'll have to see which ones will work. Ah, oh, that one's looking quite good over there. That one looks like it fits nicely. This one could potentially be good enough for the brassabole. We'll see. Brassabola, eh? Always makes me want to have ice cream. Brassabola, eh? Or pasta, something like that. First of all, I'm gonna take this out and we're going to put some cinnamon on that cut. Avoid the cinnamon from on the roots. And there went that piece of bark that I was protecting. Avoid the cinnamon on the roots. It is desiccating, that's why it goes on a cut, because of the des desiccation properties. So we don't want that, those properties to manifest themselves on our roots. And while that dries off a little bit, we shall attack. And get her situated. That's a very beautiful plant, I must say. Very beautiful. I have not done my labels yet. I thought I was going to make a quick video, just a small one about my Dymo label maker. Maybe it is something that could be of interest. So that's why I haven't yet made my labels. Because I need to learn something else. And that is how to record my screen on the phone. <laughs> Every idea I have, everything I think of doing, I have to go to Google and say how to, <laughs> and then proceed, then proceed. All right. If you've never seen a repotting video of mine before, the support is lying down flat and flush with the bottom and there is a loop and I lift the loop up and pour, and pour the lecker in first and then fiddle with the lecker so that it goes underneath the loop giving me a little bit more of a margin of wicking just to the next level. I do have a dry top layer in my environment. I work with it, I've gotten used to it. It is a bit annoying, but this way I bring the wicking up a little further. And then I just place my orchid in, simple as that, and pour lecker around the orchid. The back. Maybe I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but who knows who's watching? If you've not seen or done this before, take the oldest part of the orchid and put it into the back of the pot because we are anticipating growth from the front lead. Now the orchid might play its funky games. That's what orchids do. And then it might develop a growth around the back. It's rare, but it can happen. And then you feel like, oh, really? It's happened to me with my cellogeny. So yeah, haven't repotted that one yet. Still working on it. But the norm is it's gonna have one lead. The difference being with the one we've just cut, but I'll get to that. And then I'm just going to fill up lecker around it. and it's nice and warm. This is perfect for repotting. The sun has warmed up the bucket. It's a pleasant temperature. And that is perfect for roots that need to get acclimatized. Once upon a time I used heat mats and repotted no matter what time of year. Since I'm not doing that anymore, I have to be extremely wary and conscious of when I repot and what my, the state my orchid is in. So I'm just gonna tap it and let the lecker settle in around. Look at that. 
no support needed, but it's there for eventualities. Sometimes it is a good thing just to put a support in because if push comes to shove, it is always possible to train a new growth by having a support and then moving the growth towards the support as it grows and ages. Otherwise it could go in any direction. And this way you have like a backup plan. It's not in the way. The support for me is not to stake my spikes. I don't. Famous last words, if this thing turns out to be a six foot spike, I will revisit that thought and probably change my mind. But I don't normally support my spikes. I let them go pendant. One more. Hold on. Like burping a baby. This settles the orchid and the leka around. And there we have it. One down. And let's look at Ionocentra. Yeah, it'll be fine. You see the thing with self-watering, it's a good thing because I can get the, I don't have to water from the top. I'm gonna fill the reservoirs, I'll show you. And then it'll be fine. That cut will just be, by tomorrow with my top dry layer, that cut is gonna be dried off as well. Alrighty then, let's get you in your pot. You see this one is a little bit more unruly. And maybe, you see, it likes to go up. A bit of a climber here we have. But maybe with a support inside the pot, I'm already getting these new roots, these branched roots. I'm gonna tuck them under some other roots so I don't have to worry about it when, when the potting comes. This way, they're already tucked in and they will go down. So when a new growth comes and becomes a little bit of a, an unruly one, I'm gonna use the support and the light to help me to grow the orchid and the growth in the direction that I want. 90% of the time it works and then there's 10% of the funky things that orchids do. And then you deal with it from then on. Anyway. Same thing, just filling up with my little loop. It's higher than the base now. And we'll put in Iono Centra. Making sure that it is Iono Centra. Yes, it is. And let's see. I can go a little lower. Now you saw one support was in the middle and this one is to the side. It means nothing. There's no reason. I could have bent this one further and have it come out through the middle. But I don't need that. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. It would shorten the support a little bit. But otherwise have absolutely no value of being in the middle or around the outside. She's a little bit lower. But that's fine, because as this process continues, I will be patting and pulling her up gradually so that the leka has it a chance to go into every nook and cranny. That's one side. And for now, that's the other side. You'd think it'd be okay to leave her like that. But no, I want her up. It would be okay to leave her like that. It would help with the top dry layer. It would be off go fine. The job is pretty much basically done. I just want her a little bit higher. I need to be able to learn about this orchid a little bit more before I start to experiment with how to and maybe compromise something that I'm confident with with something I'm not sure of. But it could work. Tapping and pulling up. So that's about the final height that I want her to be at. Those new root tips. 
those new root tips down there in the direction I want them to go. There's a few renegades back here, but I will be dealing with those as we go along. This was a really easy repot, despite the first one being a bit tangled up in the root ball. These two, they were easy and a pleasure, and it's perfect timing for them. I couldn't have asked for better timing. If somebody would have said, when is the perfect time to repot uh, an, an encyclia? A prostechia, sorry. When is the perfect time or the best time to repot an, a prostechia? This qualifies with every step. You've got growing root tips, you've got a new growth developing, you've got the temperature is perfect, you have a healthy front part of the orchid with more than three bulbs. These are storage organs. They've done their bit, you know. But um, what I wanted to add and address is now that, now that I've cut the back bit off here, one bulb, it could be that this one's going to trigger a growth coming out in the back. It could. I doubt it. But there is a chance that would happen because it's been disturbed in the back and it's going to register that. Orchids are so smart. I love them. And that is it. That is it for my two new prostechias. Ionocentra. Brasavole. Ole! Brasavole! Ole! Okay, yeah, all right. That's okay. And now we're just going to top them up with the fertilized water. So I could theoretically just top this one up from the top. But I'm going to show you how much. Yeah. You know that's always like little smidgen. So that's about as high as I'm going to go. It's like the reservoir is up to here. And I filled it up. And these guys are gonna enjoy their first night in the big outdoors because it's more mild. Tonight there's no wind. And then tomorrow they can wake up to a beautiful, shiny, sunny day. And then tomorrow after they've had all their first rays of sun in the morning, I'm gonna put them in my prime location where they will hopefully, hopefully do well. Thank you very much everybody for watching. I really appreciated your company. I could stand here and talk away and feel as though somebody is with me. So thank you very, very much. I appreciate it and you all have a wonderful day. Bye.